opens them up and gets all the tobacco and then sells it. Wow. And it's not cheap. It's like expensive. Wow. So that's prison hustles. Prison, prison uh, hustles. Hustles. Uh, I worked in the kitchen because I would always be able to steal like meat and sell it. So a piece of chicken's a dollar. So you know, me being a cook, I would be able to get like twenty pieces of chicken, steal them. Did you actually like being in the kitchen? Uh, I mean, yeah, because I got to eat a lot better than normal inmates. I got to eat more protein, make sandwiches. Right. When you're the cook, you have a lot of benefits. All right, go ahead. You know, I was, at first I was kind of mad and upset for the judge, you know, sending me back. But when I came home, I realized that she was actually teaching me something. And um, if it wouldn't have been for me going back and you know ending up in those places, um, I wouldn't have learned what I learned and I and you know wrong to strong wouldn't have been created because you know I got I got sent to to Victorville and the first thing that happened when we got there is that you know, they walked us into the kitchen and there was, there was blood on the floor and somebody had got, gotten stabbed for a piece of chicken. You know, and in reality kind of hit me and I was like, you know, wow, you know, what, what am I doing back again? So, you know, they locked us up and I for sure thought that this time around, even though it was just six months, I, I wasn't. Even though it was just six months, I wasn't going to make it home because of the intensity of that yard and, and everything. And, you know, I'll never forget how that one guard walking me back into my cell, seeing the 5% uh, tattoo that I had on me. And, you know, he asked me about it and, and I told him and he didn't believe me. He locked me in my cell, walked away. And I guess he uh, Googled my name and stuff like that. And, you know, a couple of my videos came up and he came up and he's like, man, you're, you're the real deal. You know, you lift. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's what I do. He's like, what are you doing here? You only have six months to do. I was like, honestly, I don't, I don't know, man. So he's like, I'm going to talk to the counselor tomorrow. I was out of there a week later and I got sent to Lampak where it was one of the uh, sweetest yards I've ever been to. Uh, I say sweet because there's, there, there's always going to be drama. There, you know, yards are always going to kick, kick off, but, you know, um, it, it, was, it, was, it, was real, it was really structured. Um, everybody, you know, uh, had their, their car in, in line and there was weights there. So the weights kind of kept everybody in line. You know, everybody would follow protocol because they didn't want to lose the weights. And um, it was a pretty sweet yard. You know, I ended up learning, you know, how to create an LLC, how to start a business. And I started working on my book. And it just gave me time to reflect on my whole life and, and everything. And, you know, uh, a big change happened in my life. When I got released, you know, I came home with, with the dream that I would be able to help guys like myself that are lost 
or just don't know how to change, be able to do that, whether it's through fitness or through a mentorship or through just good old simple like tough love. And I started putting everything together, my, my LLC, my nonprofit, started visiting the prison out here, the Second Chance program. Started putting in the work. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey, but it's been worth every, every, every mile, every, just every inch has been worth it. Uh, my company has grown and I have grown. That's the biggest payoff is that I have grown helping people and still pushing my whole movement wrong and strong. It's, nothing's gonna change for me. I'm gonna have the same structure that I did like I, I had in prison, but this time it's a positive thing and I'm gonna keep pushing forward and doing what I have to do to be able to help guys like me change. My name is JC and I am Ron Strong. Nice. That's that that pretty good. Good good transition. Um is there anything else you wanna you wanna talk about, uh, or do you feel like that covered the whole thing? Because I know like the other documentaries uh, went into other details, yeah, and stuff like that's what that's like. I mean, if we were to go into details, we would be here all fucking exactly. day. You know what I mean? So it's like that's something that I pretty much need to leave for the book because yeah. like that motherfucker is taking forever. Because yeah. there's so much shit. Yeah. But I, I think that this one went the right route. Like. Yeah. It did. She it covered did. a little bit more of my childhood and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I like, I like how she started it with talking about, about like what, what you, like if, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it showed that a little bit more softer side of the yeah. whole thing, which is, which is good. To, yeah. Like I think for, for guys that are watching it, to be able to see someone like you talk about that, cause I mean, Crap, man, everybody got a family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most of them are going through the same thing. Yeah. You're in prison the whole time and you have kids and they have not seen you at all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think that I think that was that was good. And then um maybe maybe let's touch on that. You touched on it a little bit, but maybe let's touch on that a little bit more to just kinda bring it full full circle. Okay. You know, like okay, you weren't able to see your kids, this is what you're doing now, and then maybe along with Run to strong and your family life. Would you see the whole thing going in five years? You okay. So, so maybe just yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, I'm right there. Cool. So I have Jasmine, Julia, Valerie, Annabella, and Rudy. Five kids. My oldest one, Jasmine, will be flying in in December. To I would be meeting her for the first time. I'm excited. She's excited. We talk on the phone. She lives out in Chicago. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. You know, um, my 21 year old Julia. She's a copy of me, and we bump heads a lot. And she is a, I say an old version of myself because of the old JC would hold grudges for a long time. So me and her are not talking right now. <laughs> me and her, uh, we fight a lot. Um, we disagree on a lot of stuff because I am her father and she feels that I wasn't around so she was cheated. So I don't have a right to tell her nothing. So. We, we get into our little, you know, back and forth. Valerie, she's a sweetheart. She's, she's, she, I know it affected her that I was gone for so long, but we, we, you know, spend time together. I pick her up on the weekends, you know. I just took her uh, shopping for school. And we, we talk, you know, me and her have had a little, little issues because she's a teenager. She started smoking weed and I had to say something. I didn't want to say something because I, you know, I, I don't know how to be a father. You know, I'm learning as I go, and I don't think there's either, 
the way that I look at it now, I don't think there's a, a, a right way and a wrong way. <laughs> I think you just kind of like, you know, go with the blows and, and learn as much as you can. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to push her away. I don't want her to think that she can't tell me anything. So, you know, um, we've talked about a lot of things and, you know, hopefully, she doesn't go that route. You know, it's very hard nowadays with all this music and all this culture and rap and all that stuff that, you know, that smoking weed, I guess, is like normal, you know. But um, we're, doing, we're doing good. Um, Rudy, I never met him. Um, I don't know where him, his mom lives. I'm still trying to find him. I pay, I pay child support uh, every month on him and you know, maybe one day her, her mom, you know, would let me see him. And uh, Annabella, I mean, she is, she is my, my everything. She is my, my, you know, when she was born, she was healthy and then she got sick at six months and it was not good, you know, seizures and she almost lost her life to one seizure and, and you know, she's my, my rock, my, the one that makes me work as hard as I do and m makes me want to change and be better and learn faster and, and everything. She is, she is my, my reason. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't wait to actually see her go to school. I can't wait to you know, hold her hand when the first boyfriend breaks her heart. I, I, there's so many things that I can't wait for because of how she's teaching me to love, how she's teaching me to, to be a family. And that's the thing is that I, I tell everybody on my videos, on, on my YouTube channel is that, you know, your past does not define you, you know. You know, you, you, you're not your mistakes. And if you don't know how to do things, like be a father, be a friend, have a job, stuff like that, these are all things that you can learn. You can learn, but you need to be willing to want to learn. And that's my biggest, my biggest like message is that it's never too late. It's never too late to change. It's never too late to want to do something better, to live better. And you know, that's what makes wrong strong what it is.